Hello Curious and welcome back! Although it has been a few years since the passing of the legendary Hugh Hefner, there is still a lot of buzz about him and no shortage of controversy. A lot of media fuss has been made for quite some time by one of his ex-girlfriends and also a favourite, Holly Madison, who has a lot of bad things to say about Hugh and recently called what went on in his villa a cycle of abominations. However, Holly's recollection surprised some former bunnies. Isabella St. James has been vocal about it. Being one of Hefner's main girlfriends, she remembers him well and outright calls Holly ungrateful. However, she admits that not everything was as colourful as it might seem. What were some of Isabella's recollections about the Hef and her time at the mansion? And why did she leave Hugh just before the reality show The Girls Next Door? What was her path to the famous mansion? Stay with us to find out some of the latest drama involving the former Playboy Bunners, but before we continue, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Many people to this day remember with nostalgia the programme The Girls Next Door, which showed a slice of the lavish life of Hugh Hefner and his women. The legendary Playboy founder loved female company and those ladies, who were special to him, were allowed to live in his mansion. This was a lifestyle he led long before the creation of the reality show, in which the first five seasons centred around the then-girlfriends of the then-approximately 80-year-old Hefner, namely Holly Madison, Bridget Marquard and Kendra Wilkinson. As it turns out, before the show aired, Isabella St. James, who had been in a relationship with the owner of the huge empire for two years, decided to move out of the mansion. She was living in his villa at a time when Holly, who has been going public for years about how bad her life was Hugh was, was also living there. In 2015, Madison released a book in which she described her distressing memories while talking about the depression she faced during those years and the mistreatment by Hefner. We don't want to repeat ourselves, so if you want to know what she had said previously, you can do so by checking out a previous video by clicking on the link above. But for now, stay with us and listen, because the most interesting news is ahead. Holly's tales of negativity have recently taken a turn for the negative with a new documentary series, soon to be released about her dark Playboy secrets, and she's about to talk about her difficult experiences alongside Hefner. After Hugh's passing in 2017, both Mark Ward Wilkinson and St. James paid tribute to him. Bridget on her social media wrote that she was sad and grateful for all the wonderful memories and amazing experiences she shared with him. Kendra, speaking to Entertainment Tonight, said that I have changed her life and added that she will forever be grateful for their time together. Isabella said a similar farewell to him, who in turn wrote, and here we quote, Thank you for two years of remarkable adventures and a lifetime worth of memories. Rest in peace, Hugh, Marston Hefner. And while many others spoke only positively of the founder of the Playboy magazine, the only person who never paid tribute to him was Holly Madison. The now 46-year-old Isabella St. James was the first and only Polish woman to live in a famous Playboy mansion and date Hugh Hefner. And she has a lot to say about it. What's more, for years she was disagreed with what Holly Madison says and already in 2015 she claimed that Holly's book about living in a mansion is a bunch of nonsense. But we'll tell you more about that in a moment. Anyone who thinks Isabella's accomplishments include being just Hefner's girlfriend are sorely mistaken. Yes, she once entered the world of the famous Hugh, got to know him perfectly and became a public personality, but apart from that, she is a lawyer, knows five languages, appeared in a few productions as an actress, wrote a book and, most of all, does a lot of good for small four-legged friends. She runs a rescue service for pugs, the Pug Queen Foundation, and is known on social media as the Queen of Pugs, who has already saved a really huge number of dogs. But maybe first, let's start at the beginning. Isabella St. James was born as Isabella Kasprzyk in September 1975 in Krakow, Poland. She was 10 years old when her parents decided to leave the country. Her road to Los Angeles, where she currently lives, was really long and it's a really interesting piece of her story. She and her parents first moved to Athens, Greece. Later they moved to Canada, where Isabella grew up. Her parents travelled frequently and changed the inhabited areas of this country at least several times. Nevertheless, she was a very good student and graduated from high school with an award for excellent academic performance. As she mentioned in an interview she gave, after school, she moved to Montreal to study at McGill University. There, according to the information we were able to find, she started with a double major in political science and history, but switched to humanities and studied art history, classical music, literature and Spanish. After a few years in Montreal, she had enough of the winter climate. She decided to go somewhere warm. 
She wanted to study law and sunny Malibu turned out to be the perfect place to continue. As she confessed, he would quote, The university in Los Angeles looks like some kind of a miracle. I fell in love with this school. It was located by the ocean, with sunshine and palm trees all around. I have stayed there to this day. In the meantime, however, despite a lot of studying, she was adventurous and so she did part of her studies in Madrid and part in Krakow at the Jagiellonian University. Although she had to make up curriculum differences, it worked out well for her. After graduation, she managed to find a job with a private company that dealt with law in the entertainment industry. She even worked as a lawyer for Playboy. Are you wondering how it all started? It was 2000 when Isabella met Hugh Hefner in an exclusive club. She was 25 at the time and close to graduating from college. As she told the story, she went out with a friend and he was there. Since she wanted to become a journalist, she decided to take the opportunity to approach the famous Hugh. Recalling the meeting, Isabella confessed that she kept to herself, but Hefner noticed her and invited her to the table. And after the conversation, he invited her and her friend to the Playboy Mansion. Although she didn't want to go at first, she let herself be persuaded. The fate was such that later, from time to time, she appeared at other parties. She took a liking to Hugh, who courted her, but she kept her distance for a year, as her priority was to finish her education. In early 2002, after graduating from law school, she allowed herself to enter Hefner's world, and a few months later, she moved into his villa. As she recalls, and here we quote, It was really seven years of hard work. Politics, economics, law. I was tired. Maybe it was a little reckless, but I let myself go on such an adventure. I was 26 years old. I was no longer an underdog. Besides, my life had never been standard. I knew that if I started working as a lawyer in six months, my private life would end. Working 12 hours a day, commitments, I wanted a break, and I decided to live in the most famous mansion in the world. And so Isabella became one of the official Playboy girls, with whom she ended the relationship after two years in May 2004. As she recalled, when she found herself outside the gates of the mansion, she went into shock. Here we quote an expert. It looked like paradise on earth, beautiful, green, a swimming pool, tennis courts and even a spring, private grottos, waterfalls, a zoo. There are peacocks walking all over the mansion, birds singing. It was almost impossible to understand that someone lives in such a private paradise. Isabella revealed that the girls had no responsibilities and had everything at their beck and call. However, it soon turned out that it was not a fairy tale life at all, because as she confessed, she felt like a very empty doll locked in a cage. As she once wrote, I was bored of all these material things. I got bored of our only pastime, which is shopping, because how many handbags can a person have? Okay, it may make you happy for a while, but there is no real joy in it. I felt unfulfilled. I longed for normalcy. I missed even mundane things like cleaning. She left because she wanted to do something in life that mattered. She missed freedom, independence and true love. She disappeared from Hefner's life before the reality show was created because, as she explained, she wasn't ready to sacrifice another three to four years of her life, preferring to make it her own. Talking about Hugh, she revealed that he was afraid of betrayal and ridicule and the girls had to come back at an appointed time and explain for being late. He also did not want them to work. He exceptionally allowed her to do so so that she wouldn't lose touch with the profession she had gained through her study and so she could work as a lawyer for Playboy. According to Isabella, life at Hef's side was good. She was like a princess in a great castle, but after two years the castle began to resemble a prison. Nevertheless, she calls her experiences extraordinary. It is also hard to find her saying anything bad about Hefner, as she emphasized she had the opportunity to live with the legend. Here's a quote. To me, he was an interesting, extremely interesting, out-of-the-box thinking man. I honestly fell in love with him. Maybe there was no chemistry in it. I didn't think, oh my gosh, he's deadly handsome, but it was love, although not as crazy as in the movie. My feelings arose from fascination and respect. In one of the interviews, she confessed that Hef actually had intimate contact with girls very rarely. She revealed that for a long time between her and him, there was no intercourse, but they talked a lot and maintained a friendly relationship. And according to her, Hugh never forced the girls to do anything. What is more, long before Holly's idea to publish a book, Isabella had done it. In 2006, she published her memoirs about life in a famous mansion. The publication titled Bunny Tales, Behind Closed Doors at the Playboy Mansion, was quite a hit, thanks in part to passages describing close-ups of Hefner, which made many people curious. From St. James's memoir, it seems that by the time she and Holly had a chance to live with the playboy, she didn't have much energy for crazy bedroom fun. One passage read, He lay on me like a dead fish. We often wondered why he was doing anything at all, and he must have known it was just a facade, part of the show. Still, he tried to live the fantasy he had been selling to people since 1954. 
and while her book including these kinds of descriptions, she was unlikely to use any words to hit back at Hefner to hurt him. And for this reason, among others, many have long wondered why Isabella and Holly's memoirs are so different. According to St. James, Madison, with the stories she started to share a few years ago, took revenge on Hef because he did not want to marry her and she was obsessed with him. Some time ago, when talking about that time, Isabella emphasised that Holly was the happiest of the bunnies in the mansion and had only ambition to get rid of all the girls because she had only one dream, to marry Hef. And while in recent years Holly has argued that it took her a long time to realise how manipulated, humiliated and abused she was by Hefner, an outraged Isabella speaking out claimed that Holly willingly participated in depriving acts that the other girls are bored doing. Her words were, When you want something strongly, you will sacrifice your dignity and cross all moral boundaries to get it. And then you turn the cat on its head to become a victim. Maybe she believed it herself, but I feel sorry for Hef. Holly is ungrateful. What do you think? Will Isabella refer to the documentary? about Playboy secrets that will be released in early 2022? Well, the material promises to be controversial and may cause a lot of media uproar. Say curious, have you ever heard of Isabella St. James before? What do you think about such a huge difference in the memoirs of Isabella? Have you ever heard of Isabella like Isabella think that Madison is trying to get revenge on Hef? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.